Um, you know, if Jesus returned in 70 AD, if the resurrection took place in 70 AD, what changes occurred after that took place? So, for example, you know, Paul said, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's so many things that um, he spoke of that we are, I feel like we're still waiting for that you would say actually came. So wouldn't that have changed things in the church? Because uh, I'm not that familiar with Church of Christ practices, but in, in the Baptist world, uh, we feel like we are following the instructions and the epistles of the Apostle Paul and uh, nothing has changed. We're, but Paul was clearly showing that they were to be looking for something. And so if that thing came, I guess, what's what's changed? How are we supposed to be operating now? Well, uh, first of all, there was most definitely a change of uh, things that took place. As a matter of fact, that change was already underway in the first century because in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18, uh, uh, Paul talked about they were being changed from glory to glory. And that's a present tense in that uh, text. So there was a transition going on from the old covenant, the ministration of death to the ministration of righteousness in real time when the uh, New Testament was being written and when the apostles were preaching. So they were coming out of that old covenant and uh, coming into the fullness of the new covenant. Uh, some other things that, that changed. First of all, uh, when we talk about um, the changes, uh, there was a change of the uh, of anim from animal sacrifices to that of Christ. Now, I know you would probably say, well, that happened at the cross, but the consummation of the uh, atonement for that ended in 70 AD. And so that's one change where, you know, you don't have Jews who were zealous of keeping the law and who did keep the law in Acts 21 still required to do that from that, uh, from that perspective. That it was released... never commanded in churches though. Excuse me? Well, you say, never... in, you say in churches, well, it was commanded in the first century church right there in no, Acts wasn't. chapter 21. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. They were commanded to do animal sacrifices. No, in the church? no. In, in um, Matthew 5, and verse uh, 19, Jesus told them that anyone who kept those commandments would be um, uh, called the great in the kingdom of heaven, and those who broke them would be the least in the kingdom of heaven. In Acts 21, they charged Paul with teaching the Jews who were among the Gentiles to forsake Moses and not to circumcise their children. And the... Um, uh, James came and said, you know, have a conversation with them. Let them know because there are myriads of Jews who believe and who are zealous for the law. And he says, let them know that you yourself also walk orderly and keep the law of Moses. And then asked him or required of him to go to the temple and offer a sacrifice. That's in Acts 21, 20 mm -hmm. through 27. Right. That was him becoming a Jew so he could win the Jews. So he would not be an offense to them. The churches were never commanded to do anything. Gentiles like were not. God never allowed the Gentiles right. to come but in. That's where I was talking about the Pauline epistles when he's writing to the churches. And what changed after 70 AD? I mean, that, and I, I can, and it's, it's another argument for another day, but I don't believe they were ever supposed to continue doing sacrifices, but that was not immediately revealed. It took time. And I believe 70 AD, you know, proved it, you know, finally when, uh, God had the temple destroyed, but no, in the churches, nothing is cha nothing has changed. Well, I'm saying to you that Jews in the first century were still. I don't care what the uh, the Jews and no, no, no. Um, I'm talking about Christian. Off doing uh, wait, wait, wait tell me. You, you you're interrupting me. You won't let me answer. I'm talking about Jews who were in the church, were keeping the law. Okay. Now they weren't under the condemnation of the law because of the gospel, but they were yet keeping the law because the law could not be set aside until all every jot and tittle of it was fulfilled and you're arguing for the resurrection which is one of the tenets of the law all the way back to genesis but in isaiah as well because paul said in isaiah 25 uh, i mean in isaiah uh, excuse me yeah isaiah 25 8 isaiah said which paul quotes in first corinthians 15 then shall come to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory. But he also quotes from Hosea as well. Old 
death, where's your sting? Oh, Hades, where's your victory? The sting of death is sin, the strength of sin of the law. So they're quoting the law. As a matter of fact, if you read 1 Corinthians 15 carefully, you will see not only does he quote there, but he's quoting Daniel. He's quoting Psalms. He's quoting um, Isaiah. And uh, it's, it, all through, he's quoting Old Testament in order to demonstrate that. Even when he talks about the first fruits, that's an Old Testament concept from Leviticus 26 and from uh, from Exodus 29, I think. So okay. all of those, are, and, and one other point, he starts out the chapter saying this, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So we can't take away the Old Testament in talking about the resurrection. And that's the whole point. You have a resurrection doctrine that is outside of the scope of the law and the prophets. 